Hello, and welcome back to another Eureka monthly review roundup video thing where I talk about uh, a month's worth of new releases from Eureka Entertainment on Blu-ray, and this time we're going to be talking about the September 2023 releases, along with kicking off, let's get right into it, um, a title I didn't show in the August uh, roundup reviews video, which um, I didn't have at the time. I now have it, I've now watched it. And I have some thoughts, and uh, these will all have, um, at some point, in-depth Blu-ray review videos dedicated to them. But I'm just trying to catch up um, and stuff after my holiday. So, the first one here is The Skyhawk. Um, so, a lot of people were quite excited about this one when it first was announced. Uh, really meant nothing to me as such. Uh, obviously, I recognize that Sammo Hung was in this. Carter Wong seemed familiar to me, but that was pretty much it. Um, and it says Wong Fei Hung on the cover, so I was at least glancingly familiar with the the character slash historical figure of Wong Fei Hung, who was a martial arts practitioner and a doctor in the 1800s, and uh, something of a Chinese folk hero. And it was only natural that he would get many kind of um, you know fictionalized versions of his life, and that manifested itself in cinema in the form of kung fu movies. So. This was my first kind of experience with the original on the screen Wong Fei Hung, whose name is Quan Tak Hing. Now, I watched this film. I didn't know who the Skyhawk was supposed to be or that, that Quan Tak Hing's character was Wong Fei Hung until I actually heard them in the movie referring to him as Wong Fei Hung. I was, oh, Wong. And then I realized. Um, that I'd seen this on the cover, that the name was there, because I've seen, uh, of course, Drunken Master, the two Drunken Master movies where Jackie Chan played Wang Fei Hung, and then Once Upon a Time in China, where Jet Li played Wang Fei Hung. So seeing this old man in his late 60s playing the character was a little bit different for me, a little bit of a change of speed, but this was like a, a return to the character from uh, Quanta King, where he had played the character for a reported, like, between 80 and 100 movies, which is absolutely insane. And he came back for this film and a few others in the 70s. And so it was kind of a big deal that this iconic um, actor who has played this iconic character was coming back for this movie. And so I, I didn't quite get that, um, <laughs> that resonance when I first watched the film because I didn't know any of that backstory before I'd gone into the extras and stuff on the disc. But the film itself, you get, it's a fairly traditional kind of standard Kung Fu story. In fact, it, it, it kind of um, picks very generously from the scraps of the Bruce Lee movies from the early 1970s. And I'm going to dive into my review of this, the, the, the huge kind of significance of Bruce Lee's absence in, in the Hong Kong film world. Um, with this film coming out the year after his death. In fact, I think they went into production on this the year of his death, and they were desperately trying to find the next Bruce Lee to fill the shoes of the man who had become such a huge phenomenon. And, of course, they never did that. Um, there were huge Hong Kong stars after Bruce Lee, but, you know, in different forms. You could never get someone like Bruce Lee um, to be like that again. But they tried. And this film um, presents Carter Wong as kind of the you know, perhaps the prototypical Bruce Lee um, successor of sorts. So you get Sammo Hung in this, a very young Sammo Hung, which is really fun to see because I'm such a huge fan of him. And, you know, his character is very minimal in the film, but he, he, the action is great. He actually um, directed the action in this film, the choreography. And, you know, there's, there's some cool fights. There's some gorgeous on-location stuff in Thailand. Um, I didn't realize it was Thailand until about halfway through the movie, but I was just like, this is like, I love the ruins and like even like the just the greens of like all the grass and the trees really popped on the Blu-ray for me. It's a gorgeous transfer, but I just love the the Thailand setting for some reason, except for the final fight where it, it swiftly moves to a set and it's really poorly done and it kind of drained the life out of the movie for me right at the very end, which is a real shame because otherwise I really love this film. I, I still do. And I really enjoyed the portrayal of Wang Fei Hung as this kind of, uh, he's probably like master figure. You know, he isn't this, as I'd seen him in, in Drunken Master and Once Upon a Time in China, this kind of vibrant, young, athletic figure. You know, you can tell there's a bit of doubling going on there with the actor and stuff, but there's, you know, there's a much different flavor to Wang Fei Hung in this film. And I really enjoyed that, this man who wouldn't 
take the step to fight even though his uh, his students are kind of like, come on, we got to get revenge on... Because there's a whole plot, you know, and there's, there's factories and there's warring sides. Again, very big boss. And um, and there's a restaurant, you know, throwing a bit of Way of the Dragon. So I liked all the little inner workings. I thought the film breezed by. It's like, it's like an hour and 20-something minutes, hour 26 minutes. You even get Nora Mao, who played, you know, with Bruce Lee in numerous movies. So you really are feeling the the after effects of the the absence of Bruce Lee in this. But as its own film, I really enjoyed it. And I, I forget the actor's name, Huang Inchik, who plays um, the kind of the martial arts villain. There's two villains in the film. There's one who's this kind of evil, you know, uh, uh, factory owner slash you know, <laughs> drug trafficker. And he's a really good villain, but the the kind of the this Korean hapkido um, fighter who is just brilliant to watch on screen, and he so he's a really cool villain. His fighting's awesome, so I really enjoyed all the different elements in this film. And the release itself was really brilliant for me. The the extras may look minimal on the surface, but the two commentaries are just excellent. So you get Frank Jang, um, who has a lot of information about the film, and um, really tries to, again, hone in on some of those um, wordplay uh, moments in the film that just you just could not really translate to English. And, he, and there's one point where he's, he feels like maybe he's not even explaining it that well, but I think he did a fairly good job of trying to get across some of those um, finer intricacies of the, the Cantonese dialogue. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll talk more about that later today. It, it's hard for me to not get into because I love this release so much. Um, and then there's another commentary from Arna Venema, Mike Lida. This one was a lot of fun, as usual, with those guys. And lots of uh, great information and speculation on when the film might have even been shot. And uh, talking about Thailand and things. So I really loved the... I'm really liking the contrast between these two commentary teams. Frank Jeng and then having Mike Lida, Arna Venema. I just feel like the two styles of commentary complement each other well and they rarely kind of go over the same ground too much which i think is really impressive and uh, really informative and then there is a 20 minute interview with critic um is it critical martial arts cinema scholar blade poe and that one is is really good like a 20 minute it, it just plays over clips from the movie uh, in uh, subtitled in english and lots of kind of background information on the movie so you just get tons on here really great booklet love the slip cover as well and there's an original poster on the in inside if you want to flip the inlay around. Overall, I absolutely love this. That was a great, great release. So moving on to um, September 2023. This one really surprised me. So another Hong Kong film. It is She Shoots Straight, directed by Corey Yoon. And starring uh, Joyce Gudenzi, Karina Lau, uh, Tony Leung Kafai, and uh, a whole host of other um, Hong Kong actors, including Yuen Hua, who I'm becoming a big fan of. I'm really enjoying Yuen Hua. I haven't seen much of him, but to see Yuen Hua in um, Mr. Vampire Saga 4 and then to see him in this film is such a crazy contrast and really shows his range as an actor. And so um, he, he's kind of this uh, Vietnamese villain in this film. And it's a girls with gun movie, but it's kind of a yes, madam film. It's an in the line of duty movie. It, it kind of ticks all the boxes. It feels like one of those films. You know the the main character. She's 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 a cop. You know, so I just feel like it's it's part of that family, and I definitely underestimated this film because it wasn't an in the line of duty movie or, or like it didn't have a Michelle Yeoh behind it, and so I wasn't expecting this to be as incredible as it actually is. I thought this was a brilliant film, phenomenal action movie, and the key, as I always say, to, for me it, with a great action movie, is to have that story as the foundation. And this is a story that really hooks you in. And it gets melodramatic, but I kind of like melodrama. So I was really on the, le the level with this one. And I just thought the acting was great. I thought Joyce Cadenzi was, was really, really good. I thought that her acting was, was top-notch. Karina Lau really brought kind of a, a great dynamic there because um, I'm not going to get into too much, but um, Joyce Cadenzi plays Mina and she marries into this family and it's all, you know, there's the, the one son and then all of the sisters are all, you know, police officers. They're all police officers, in fact, even her husband is. But um, it's, I like the dynamic of the family and this woman who's kind of an outsider comes in, who marries into the family, but also she's a part of the, the family business in a way too. And so it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you don't mix uh, 
what was it business and pleasure kind of thing like you know you <laughs> you keep your work at home and then your home life at home but this is kind of it's all mixed in together the drama is is kind of really ripe and there's just incredible action set pieces you know chase scenes shootouts in bars like hand to hand combat the final fight in this is fucking incredible it's it's a brilliant film and another incredible selection of extras the same kind of double whammy of commentaries which you know is basically the same thing as i said before i'll go into more detail with my individual review of this but we do have mike leader and anna venema and then frank jang doing his own solo commentary lots of great information on there and then we have a an interview with valerie so uh, she talks about the film for about seven or eight minutes and uh, kind of discusses her kind of um, feelings on it. And then we have a brand new filming locations featurette, um, which I'll talk about um, quite a bit in the review because I have quite a lot to say about it. It was a brilliant um, featurette that uh, Anna Venema produced. Uh, Michael Eat is there too, and they're kind of going around Hong Kong and showing you certain areas from this movie. And I thought it was just really well put together and really fun. And I just love that kind of stuff, really, seeing locations from movies that were made many years ago and seeing the differences, seeing the similarities and stuff. Then you get, um, you know, there's a, tra there's a trailer on there. It says trailers on the back, but I think I only remember watching one trailer, although there was only one trailer on the Blu-ray. So, and another really nice um, slip cover there too. So for me, this actually was a real surprise. I don't know why I, I should be surprised. I shouldn't, you know, be <laughs> underestimating these Hong Kong films. Because I clearly love them so much, I'm in the bag already, but this was phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. Um, now we got the kind of the two kind of deluxe editions that came out in September. Um, the first one is Valley Girl uh, with Nicolas Cage and Deborah Foreman, is it? Yeah, so we have this early, early 80s movie, Nick Cage's first, I believe it was his first film um, starring in a leading role, but also under the name of Nicolas Cage. Of course, he's... Nicholas Coppola, and I think you want to avoid the <laughs> the kind of connotations of having that that last name. But this is about a young punk who falls in love with a valley girl, and it's kind of um, it's a bit of Romeo and Juliet. There's even a, a fun kind of allusion to Romeo and Juliet in the movie. But it's this was a blast. Uh, Connie joined me to watch this one, and we had so much fun with the like the the California like valley slang of the early 80s you know like totally tubular like like non-ironic you know <laughs> just there's a line that Deborah Foreman keeps saying in the film when she's like I'm sure and she doesn't really mean I'm sure it's kind of and there's a different meaning to it and so we're kind of like trying to wrap our heads around the the slang and the meaning and the intonation and stuff um, a very strange uh, <laughs> um, couple of characters who play um, her her parents in the film including Colleen Camp, and, but Nicolas Cage, very interesting in this, you know, we were kind of waiting for the Nicolas Cage moment, it, it does arrive, but he, he was quite good, I, I, I enjoyed the romance, and I enjoyed the frustration of, like, the, you know, both of their friend groups just do not mix at all, and so it's that kind of, I guess, the star-crossed lovers kind of story of these two people who really shouldn't be together, they're from the different, different sides of the track, so to speak, and you know it's it's an 80s movie it's an 80s teen movie and you kind of get what you what you would expect it's it i really really enjoyed it i kind of i like kind of um you know teen 80s movies it kind of reminds me of my youth and stuff and watching those films when i was a kid and on tv and things things like breakfast club etc never seen this one so i really enjoyed it the, the transfer on this is absolutely incredible it fluctuates at times through different shots which is only natural given the shot on film but some of the shots in this just look beautiful there's so much grain so much detail really captures the period all that color and stuff so really really enjoyed this now the actual release itself has got this really nice um artwork to start with on the outer box it's a hard box uh, release and then on the inside you get the, this poster which was on the, the blu-ray menu and it's nicholas cage with i don't know who and we're both like who is this woman and of course the camera is refusing to focus on it for some strange reason. There we go. Um, this woman is not in the movie. It almost looks like an AI generated <laughs> poster in that sense. But you know, regardless, um, you get a really nice booklet on the inside too. And this is more of a, a book than an actual book. I don't know how many pages this one is. Let's take a look. It's a 60 page book. Um, we'll dive into this in more detail in the future, of course. Um, I'm looking forward to diving into this. And giving it a proper look but uh you know that the color scheme fits nicely with the outer box and everything but the extras on this 
Uh, like, there's no chill on these extras. I was blown away. I haven't even begun to scratch the surface on these extras. So, 4K scan from the original negative, which is no surprise to me because the transfer looked so good. Um, I'll just show you the cover as I read from the back here exactly what you get. Uh, there's two commentaries. First, a new commentary to critics. Um, Maya Montanez Smukla and Maria San uh, Filippo. Then you get a, an audio commentary with the director Martha Coolidge. A new interview exclusive to this release with the, the, the female lead of the film, Deborah Foreman. You get um, a new interview with Colleen Camp, which is actually an audio interview that plays over the movie. I haven't listened to it yet, so I don't know exactly how long it is. Then there is Valley Girl in Conversation, a 2018 interview with director Martha Coolidge and actresses E.G. Daly and Heidi Holika, and that is like almost an hour in length, that 2018 interview with the director and two of the stars. Then there's um, the director and Nicolas Cage on Valley Girl, which was um, produced around the 20th anniversary of this. This is a 40th anniversary edition, so 20 years ago, Nicolas Cage got together with the director and they talked about this film, it's about 20 minutes long, something like that. Then there is, and it says in the back here, a huge selection of archival interviews of cast and crew, totaling over three hours. Um, that ain't kidding. Like, there, there's, there's, and it seems like there's, like, cause I've kind of skimmed through, and I'm looking forward to, like, checking the whole thing out, but it seems like it's a lot of raw interview footage from, like, the 20th anniversary documentaries and featurettes that they made, and it's, like, the female stars, 50 minutes, the, the boys, like 50 minutes, the producers, 50 minutes, the, the music, 45 minutes, like it's, there's even more than that. It, it, I think it's over th four hours, really. Then there's a, tw a 20 totally tubular years later featurette. There's a, a featurette on the music. There's music videos. There's storybook board comparisons. There's an original trailer. It's like, how much can you pack? inside one disc like it's it's outrageous i almost wish that they had maybe given it a second disc to to dedicate a lot of you know space to the main feature but it looks fantastic anyway it didn't seem like there was anything compromised in the quality or the the end code but man this release is absolutely stacked i if this was a film that i loved you know really deeply i'd be in absolute heaven you know what i mean like i really enjoyed this film don't get me wrong and I'm looking forward to diving into the extras. And they've done an amazing job with this release in terms of the packaging, the extras, the transfer. This is just an A plus, you know, five star release. But I just think like if this was one of my all time favorite movies, it would just be like you'd be in heaven. Like it's just such a, a treat to see any film get that kind of treatment. And then finally, um, I have done a video about this. So you can go check that out. I won't get into this too much. But we have the, the big 4K Master of Cinema release of Orson Welles' Touch of Evil. A beautiful box set release um, that brings together all four versions of the film in widescreen. Uh, there's not the two um, kind of square frame, four by three aspect ratios that were available on the original Eureka release. But um, if you want to check out my kind of comparison between the 4K and the original MOC Blu-ray, I did kind of a, a rough, you know, um, bootleg version of that, showing you some different screenshots that I took from the TV, which I don't like to do normally, but you can still see even through you know, um, filmed off the TV clips, you can see the difference in the transfer and the 4K. I think the 4K on this looks incredible. It really, really does. So you get the three versions, the theatrical, the preview, and the reconstructed version from 1998. Uh, I believe this booklet is a little bit thicker than the the Valley Girl one. It might be an 80-page book. And I just, oh, I love this image so much. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, this is on the Steelbook. And I do believe this is... Uh, Oh, it's actually nearly a hundred page book, actually. Yeah, this is, and the thing I really love, and I talked about it in that other video, was that you get the full Orson Welles memo that he sent to the studio about kind of following his vision when they decided to kind of take the film out of his hands, so to speak. But um, yeah, a really thick booklet. Um, and this one is, it's going to take me a while to do a full review on this one because there's four audio commentaries. And... Um, and a lot of stuff, and then there's the 100-page book to read as well. But I really want to um, commit to giving this a full, proper review. The only thing that, that bothers me is that I can't do 4K clips. You know, I really wish I could. I had a way to access the 4K discs, and then I could kind of go all out and even maybe film the review in 4K, because I don't think it's... 
worth me filming any of my videos in 4K because I mean who who cares right but if I if I could include 4K clips that'd be great maybe that's something I'm going to try and try and look into but um that's the only thing that's kind of making me a bit ugh, about uh doing my eventual review of this but you get two discs for both cuts of the film and the discs are annoyingly not aligned which always bugs me but we'll we'll leave it there and uh, again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I love that cover artwork. And so this one also feels like a pretty damn complete package. The four audio commentaries, you know, featurettes, the big book. It's uh, it's really just a, a, a complete release, I would call it. Like, I just don't see how you could ever get any better than this, really. Uh, with the exception, of course, of the the 4x3 aspect ratio versions of the film. But I still don't know too much about those and what their origins are and what the original intent was in terms of the aspect ratio. So I need to look into that. But when I do my review of this, it's going to be super thorough. And the film itself, you know, in a nutshell, film noir at its finest. You've got an amazing cast. Orson Welles, who directed the film, also stars in it. You've got like a really nice kind of quasi cameo appearance from Marlena Dietrich, but also you got, you know, Charlton Heston, like it's just an incredible cast of characters. It takes place on the border between Mexico and, and the US and it's like, most of it takes place at night and it's kind of grungy and it's grimy and it's, there's a bomb that goes off at the beginning and there's all sorts of intrigue and it really is film noir, as I said, at its finest. So this was just another amazing release and I think that this month in particular um, for September 2023, just in terms of the variety of films, you know, um, is just really, really great. I've really um, loved all three of these, and I'm just so impressed by them um, in, in varying different ways, from the extras of Valley Girl, the 4K presentation of Touch of Evil, and the booklet with the Orson Welles memo, and it's in full, and then just being so surprised by She Shoots Straight as well. So, And then Skyhawk from August was another one that uh, I absolutely loved. So I I absolutely feel like the biggest shill in the world with Eureka stuff, but it's only because it's true. I really am just loving everything they put out this year. It's um, lucky for me, I guess. I know, again, people have been kind of griping and moaning about, oh, they've released too many Hong Kong things. Well, there's a month, September, where there was just one Hong Kong release and two American films, but I know that people are kind of clamoring for other things and silent cinema, and don't get me wrong, I'm there too, but... Next up in October, and I'm filming this in October, we have the... In fact, I have it. Let me show it to you quickly. I have to give you a little preview. Uh, we do have a massive release this month that uh, has been long, long awaited for many people. It is Pandora's Box. I cannot wait to crack this one open and to, uh, to take a closer look and just to watch the film for the first time. Uh, I really like Diary of a Lost Girl, also starring Louise Brooks and directed by G.W. Paps, but this is... Uh, the big one, the one everyone talks about, Pandora's Box. So there's uh, there's some cool stuff to come. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one.